Football is played all over the world. Fact. In every country on earth. But there was just one nation that had not yet played an international match and did not have a football association. The Marshall Islands in the middle of the Pacific. And that is exactly what has changed recently. The last nation on earth without a national team is now also appearing on the football world map. I explain to you in this video what exactly is behind this fascinating story. Today we are talking about the youngest football federation in the world, the Soccer Federation of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. But before we talk about football there, we have to travel there. I live in Germany, so I have to check my flights to get there. First, I'm going to California, either to Los Angeles or San Francisco. From there, it's on to Honolulu in Hawaii. This is my last stopover before heading to Amata Kabua International Airport. You arrived at your destination. Arrived after 52 hours of traveling from Germany to the Marshall Islands. But now, I can take you to the country near the equator. There are just over 60,000 inhabitants, spread over five inhabited islands. The capital is Majuro on the main island. In this city alone live 23,000 people, more than a third of the population. So you can imagine that almost everything concerning the Marshall Islands is managed from there. The Marshall Islands have been independent since 1979. Before that, they belonged to the United States. But of course, the US still has a great influence on the country and is its most important trading partner. The strong ties are also noticeable in many other areas, but they are not neighbors, because the nearest islands are Kiribati, Micronesia and Nauru. Whew, quite a lot of water, quite a lot of islands. Before this insight get too confusing, let's move on to the topic of today's video. Football in Marshall Islands or, as we just learned, heavily influenced by the United States, soccer in Marshall Islands. I'll stick with football for the rest of the video though. It just feels right to me. So what sports does football actually have to compete against? Baseball and basketball are already a bigger deal on the island. Otherwise there are track and field as an island nation of course swimming and even taekwondo and weightlifting. In these four sports athletes have so far competed for the Marshall Islands in the Olympics. Normally, I would now delve deeper into the history of football in the country, but we don't have to do that as it practically only began three years ago. The Soccer Federation of Marshall Islands, which I mentioned earlier, was founded in 2020. The official Facebook page of the Federation has been up and running since February 2021. Today's expert explains the reasons for the foundation. The first technical director of the Federation in history, Lloyd Owers. Lloyd is British and 33 years old and played semi-professional football himself until he was 24. Since then he has been working on his coaching career and has quite a bit to show for it. He has worked for the FA and holds the UEFA B license and a master's degree in coaching. He got in touch with the region through an article on his blog about Samoa's national players and made his first contacts. These led to Shem Levi, the president of the Soccer Association. And now he is the technical director of the Marshall Islands Association since December 2022. They want to establish association football, soccer across their nation because the game is growing. Um, kids are wanting to play it. You know, they're telling parents, they're telling teachers they want to be involved in it. We've got adults that play informally and they want to be part of something that, that is a little bit more structured. Um, there's a national stadium being or nearing completion now and that is going to be the hub of soccer across the country it's going to be a big platform for it and having that opportunity to have that stadium and a growing presence of the game in the country is now just spiraled so it's, it's led to myself being in this position um, and you know in terms of why now it's it's not really been a local ro role model and it's also very heavily US influenced in the Marshall Islands. So it's been a lot of uh, baseball, basketball, you know, watching those sports as well as playing those sports. So now that the game's growing in the States, it's also now naturally just growing in the Marshall Islands as well. 
Lloyd mentioned the National Stadium, which will also be a bit of a home base for football in the country. But where is it and who will use it? The Majuro Track and Field Stadium, as the name suggests, is located on the main island of Majuro. It is due to be completed in a few months and then it will also host the Micronesian Games in July. Personally, I cannot imagine a more beautiful setting for a sporting event. But before a national team can be set up, many steps have to be taken. Many federations in this world are decades old and have built on existing foundations. How do you start in a country where exactly this foundation is missing? Yeah, being fairly new is, is, is difficult in the sense of we are starting from scratch. You know, we have to create everything from the bottom up. So we're starting with um, school, school games, school soccer. Um, I've created a school curriculum that will be rolled out across the, the schools in the country and PE teachers will be trained to deliver the sport and teach it to a level where they know what they're doing, but also why they're doing it. Um, so that's the first level and first stance and starting point for us. And then it links into uh, youth structures, league structures, and you know ultimately national teams as well. Were there amateur footballers in the country before 2020? Of course, the fascination with football could not completely hide from the Marshall Islands. So far, amateur teams played informally and without organized league play. Football is most popular on the island of Kwajalein where about 13,500 people live. There's also a US military base there, so of course, the troops there bring the sport with them. In the other parts of the country, however, there is often a lack of equipment, even footballs. Of course, there is also a lack of football pitches, so games have to be played in parks or similar facilities. It is probably the biggest task of the association to create these structures before thinking about a nationwide inter-island league. But it's still worth looking ahead. The first national team, where will the players come from? What could it look like? You know, we're going to find players. We have players that play now. Those players will continue to play when there's a formalized structure. We'll open it out in terms of more opportunities for people to play, more teams, more, more league structure, more just general open access sessions for people to be a part of. But also there is a massive martial arts uh, pool of citizens in the United States as well. So you look at Arkansas, for example, and that one state alone has 30,000 people. And when you compare it to the Marshall Islands, it, we have only 60,000 people that live on the, across the country itself. Um, you know, it opens out a lot, a lot of opportunities to, to find players across the world. But, you know, the first point will be to find players that are living onshore. And um, that will happen just naturally through more opportunities to play and more opportunity then to find players that are playing. So the plan is there, but now, of course, the question remains, who will the national team play against then? Will it perhaps want to join CONCACAF because of its close ties to the USA? Or perhaps the Asian Confederation, AFC, like Guam, a country that in many ways can perhaps even be compared well with the Marshall Islands? No, the focus is on Oakland, New Zealand, the seat of the Oceania Football Confederation. Yeah, we want to be part of OFC. We want to be part of FIFA long term. You know, ultimately, we want to be part of those World Cup games. We want to be part of Olympic qualifiers. We want to be a part of worldwide football. Um, we don't just want to be a non-FIFA member for forever. You know, we want to be having that opportunity to, to look at across uh, and showcase the nation to the world. So that first step is going to be OFC. And if that's in the case of being an, uh, an affiliate member, such as like Tuvalu and Kiribati, for example, neighboring nations to us, then that's absolutely fine. You know, that allows us to then have um, a pot of funding to access, which is massive in terms of kit and equipment and coaching education. So that's what the platform and that's where we're aiming to be. And ultimately, hopefully full membership of OFC and full membership of FIFA at some point. Um, but until, you know, in, you know, until we get to those standards and those levels, we are solely reliant on fundraising and sponsorship and creating an awareness of the, the culture of the country and also the game in the country. So, um, but yeah, long term, you know, we want to be IFC members, we want to be FIFA members as well. We want to play and showcase what we do across the world. So the small island state is at the beginning of a long journey. And of course, this journey will not be cheap. In order to be able to pay the costs that arise, you have the opportunity to help. I have linked the association's GoFundMe link in the description. So if you want to make the dream a reality, then support it there. 
But there is also another important topic that needs to be mentioned. The project Football in the Marshall Islands is also meant to draw attention to the fact that the country is threatened. Not from other countries, but from climate change. Rising sea levels could cause the island to be washed over. If the sea level rises by 62 centimeters, large parts of the capital would be underwater. There is a serious threat to the country and the Football Association wants to draw attention to this and the urgency to act. I hope to be able to sit here again in a while and report on the country's first official international match. Support the Marshall Islands by spreading the word and making this unique project known around the world. The last country in the world without a national team, until now. Thank you for your interest and a big thank you to Lloyd and the Soccer Federation for all the information. See you soon.